shop. Today, we're going to hopefully have a short video. We're going to see if we can repair this broken 6 amp hour M12 battery. Got this completely for free because it's broken and it's got some issues. In fact, I just broke it further. That's okay. Um, we're going to take this completely apart and see if a cheap variant will fix the Milwaukee. So let's get into it. So we're on a rubber mat. You always want to be careful with batteries. You do not want to short them out because, you know, electrons and things. Let's uh, start taking some screws out here. Powered screwdrivers are great. This is an older version from the uh, early 2000s. And uh, we rebuilt this battery on a video that probably isn't posted, but maybe we'll put that up at some point. So let's see what we can do here. It sounds a little crackly. Sounds a little crackly. Let's get the screws out all together. Seems like, there we go. So we have some rubberized retention for the batteries. Let's get the rest of the screws out. That crack we heard was the sticker sticking to the top part. You can see the adhesive remains there. No big deal. Let's get that off of there. Now what we want to do is carefully, very carefully, slide that off of there. Okay. So here's our battery pack. Let's take a look at what cells we got. Samsung 30Qs. That's some good cells. That makes sense why it's 6 amp hour. Now let's compare what we see here. It looks as though, yeah, it looks as though this is very similar. If you're looking here, the only differences I really see are these little tangs on the Milwaukee are a little bit larger than the ones here on the aftermarket one. So I guess what we can do is we could compare further and see if the casement screws are similar yeah everything's kind of similar between them but this isn't broken so I think I'd like to stick with the OEM Milwaukee if I can so let's see if this will go up in here and kind of seat I mean I think it will you can see everything sits the way it appears as though it should. It seems like it fits reasonably decent. Let's just check how the old one fit. Now you can see, even though the old one's kind of crunchy as you can hear, those tangs are sitting on those bits that are standing proud here. I think it's good enough. There you go, let me hold it so you can see it. I think it's good enough to give a go. So let's see if we can get our battery carefully up inside there. So it looks like everything's mostly seated. These don't look like they're up perhaps as far as they could be. But they don't look bad. Let's see if the casement will close. And we just want to watch that we don't pinch anything, including our sticker. Not that I really care about the sticker, but I do not want to uh, mangle it inside of there so that I can't get anything together later. 
So what do we got here? It appears as though it semi wants to go together. It's under tension in the front here. Let me play around with this off screen because this is going to get boring quickly and see. I think it's just some combination of tabs that I'm just not quite getting right. So let me play around. I'll fast forward through this. Okay, so here we go. It turns out if you put it on the right way, it makes sense. So I had that 180 degrees out. I was looking at these angles, and I didn't realize how that there was angles on both sides. So we flipped that 180, it went right back together. Now when we put this back together, because these screws were already in plastic, what we want to do is run this backwards until you feel the, the screw kind of pop into place and then carefully run it down in because if you just send a screw this will cut its own hole so a good trick with plastic so you don't strip it out is just run your screwdriver backwards give it a nudge backwards and you'll feel it I don't know if you heard that you'll feel it catch and it'll just uh, reset itself in that hole. That's how you can take plastic things apart many times and not strip them out. It's a good little trick. All right, so now we should have a new top on our broken battery. Let's put it on something 12 volt, see if it works. So here we have a good old trusty band file Slap that in there, blow some dust across the shop, and it seems like everything's working properly. Let's see if they're voltage. So that needs to be charged, which makes sense because this was sitting in a bin to be thrown out because it was broken. So we'll throw this on the charger, see if it takes a good charge. Uh, we should have probably metered the cells when we had it apart, but <clears throat> I think I'm pretty comfortable with it. I think I know why it was thrown out. It was just broken. I think this one will come around. And we're back. So, <laughs> I thought we'd get away with just charging this, but it appears as though it has some other things in mind. So, the meter's out. We should have metered it when we had it apart before. I just was so intent on finding out if... Indeed, these uh, knockoff um, pieces would work with the Milwaukee casement. Indeed, they do. Um, there's a little bit of a gap there. You can see it. But it, I think everything's making contact. But it doesn't appear as though it wants to take a charge. So what my move's going to be is I'm going to take the casement off and carefully place it on the charger and see if it wants to charge then to verify that all of these are indeed making contact. And while we have it apart, we'll meter it here with the Fluke 87. So let's get this back apart. And this is what goes along with trying to fix stuff. You know, a little bit of trial and error. Sometimes you get into things and they don't always go exactly how you think they're gonna go and that's okay so let's get this through here and let's carefully carefully being the key phrase here now this time I can't push down on this to get that out so I want to be very careful not to break anything here so let me see if I can get something that I can push in here to get those out. Yeah, that doesn't want to go super easy. It was a snug fit going in. If you recall the other one, we had easy access to push it out. So let me just get something plastic that I can jam through here and get that out with. Okay, with the help of a tie wrap, and I don't know where I have so many cut off tie wrap ends from, but with the help of a tie wrap, we're able to push this down a little bit 
we're able to slide this off of here. So now that we have the entire thing exposed, let's see if we can meter some of this without being too invasive. I don't believe we have any damaged wiring. I'm looking around at that. So I will be right back. I'm going to try and put this on a charger and we'll see if it wants to charge the way it is. Okay, so it does not want to charge the way it is. So remembering that we are on a rubber mat, always be on an insulated surface when you play around with these things. We're going to turn our meter to DC volts. And polarity doesn't really matter. We just want to look for voltage here. 3.5, that's somewhat discharged, but it's not bad. 3.8, not scared with that. 3.8, so that one is a little lower than the others, nominally. Uh, can I get into these easy enough? I think I'm going to have to do a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of surgery here just to expose that to make sure we don't have a shorted cell and if we do we're probably just gonna call it because I don't think I have 30 cues and I don't know if the age whatever so let me get these exposed so I can try and test that okay I think I got this to a point where we might be able to possibly meter it so let's see if I can get the meter lead underneath here. We had pried some of that up. Let's see what we got. 2.8. That's quite a bit lower. We may have to force feed this a little bit. That's not showing a shorted cell, but it is significantly lower than I would like to see it. What do we got here? Another 2.8. And this one here is what? 3.5. So I think what we'll do is we will try and force feed these two 2.8s uh, some voltage. We'll just try and carefully bring them up a little. I think the pack is unhappy because two of them are, are quite a bit lower than the others. So this sort of thing takes patience. All I'm going to do is take a power supply and get it hooked up the same way I had the meter hooked up. This lead right down here. They're both connected to that. Uh, you can see we are in series parallel. So this is the two series connections. Uh, I don't know if you can see it down there or not. But... Nope, blown out. But it is indeed connected to both cells right down. See if I can hold it so you can see it. Both cells are connected together there. So that's a common point of potential. We should be able to charge them individually and see if we could get them up. For our power supply, we're going to use this nifty power supply that somebody made up we got off of eBay. We can do a review on it maybe at some point. Um, what we can do with this is we can set the voltage to a much larger, or I should say lower voltage. So we can go, that's at 2.8. We can make this go to, um, let's go 3.5. just to get us going. Um, and we can also limit the current, which we want to do. And we're going to limit the current down to 1 amp. So that should get us. Now, i got to make up some leads here, because I only have alligator clamps, which may work, but... I want to make sure I have this set up just right. Okay, we're back. So I think what I see is going on here is there's two cells here that are in parallel up top. They're parallel here, parallel with the back one, 
and these two are in parallel, which it's still a series parallel circuit like we said, the locations just aren't exactly the way I described. So what I'm going to do is I have our meter set, um, we're reading 2.8 volts on the batteries right now, we're limited to a half amp, I decided to turn that down more because of how I'm going to hook this up. We're going to use the fluke meter leads with the alligator clamps on it just to get some current out so we can double check our voltage which I'm going to turn on the power supply now. We can see 3.4 volts. This thing's actually pretty accurate. And what we should see is the current go up right at that half amp. These fluke leads are rated for up to 10 amps. So we're okay here. And what we want to see is this 2.8 volts climb which we are indeed seeing. You don't want to give it too much current. You just want to let it kind of percolate a little bit. Now I'm going to let this time lapse a little bit and we'll go from here. Now I will also grab the thermal imager and see if anything's getting warm. But when you try and bring these batteries back you gotta kind of do it a little slow. Now we're gonna to have to monitor this pack because for some reason the, the cells got out of balance like this if you remember we had 3.5 and 3.8 and 2.8 for some reason they got out of balance it could have just been because it was sitting a long time um, it's kind of coming up quick so that's favorable that things aren't screwed up here but let me get the thermal imager and we'll see we'll check on it here and there and see if anything gets warm Now another good thing to check since we walked away to get the thermal imager for a little bit is let's see if the voltage sagged. We were at like 2.9-ish and you see we're staying at that 2.9. So that's good. It didn't go back down to the 2.8. So now with the thermal imager, if I can get all that in there, let's just see. See my finger? Hi battery doesn't look like it's getting warm at all everything looks relatively you can see the poles on the battery there everything looks relatively good nice and cool my finger in the glove is is the warmest thing which isn't too bad so we'll just keep track of that as we go on here we're slowly climbing on the voltage only throwing a half amp at it. We don't want to really shock it and get too greedy. All right, we're breaking the three volt threshold. Let's just double check and see. Is anything getting warm at all here? It doesn't look like it. My finger is very clearly the warmest thing in here. We can see the stuff, but it's not, not at all bad. I think what I'm gonna do is since I'm gonna let this do the, the slow creep, uh, I think we're gonna See if I can get this alligator clamp to work down here. Okay, it's been a few minutes. Let's see where we're at here. Just trying to look. Everything looks like it's a good temperature still. I don't know if you can make that out or not. Nothing's getting hot. We don't see any reds. We will just keep going with this. Okay, we're going to do another check here. Temperature. Looking good, nothing getting warm. I think we're also going to just check our power supplies meter and verify that it is indeed what it says. So it's it's running a little high, like we've we saw before. It's about a hundredth of a volt high. See the fluke says 3.15. It's saying 3.16 not bad now you will see this wattage will slowly increase as the voltage in the cell goes up because we're able to get more power into the circuit so current times voltage is wattage okay here we go quick temp checks everything's looking good you can see we're creeping up nice and easy we're at three point three volts the fluke agrees we'll keep going with it and we're back again so let's take a look here 
see how everything's looking. You can see. Well, that's tough to get the show up. There you go. Looks pretty good. Nothing really getting hot at all. I think we could bump the current up just a little bit more. Okay, we're back. So you can see we're just doing a slow build up here. This has been a time lapse until this point. Let's take a look here. Everything is still very cool. Let's see a little bit of heat at the top. See that is... Actually that's just a reflection off of that. So it's not even really getting warm at all. I'm going to turn the current up more. Alright, so we're going to do another check here. Let's take a look. Our battery is nice and cool. Our power supply is definitely warmer than the battery itself. Can't even see the connections. You can see the battery, the wires going to it, but you can't even see the connection is showing up hot. So I think what we're seeing is the voltage drop of the leads. So at the power supply we have 3.65 volts but out at the battery we have 3.55 so if that's correct what we should be able to do is drop the current down and uh, everything should get a lot closer let's just see so there you have it the current throttled way back, the battery actually has more voltage now. So that has to be the voltage drop in the leads. Interesting. So we're gonna let this go a little bit more. If you recall, we are currently equal to the lower set of cells that were in, in this battery. Now that we've reached that, I happen to know the other chargers for these batteries put a lot more current in. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, we're going to go up to 2.7, I think. And we're going to see if we can get the voltage to come up a little bit better, a little bit quicker. Um, I just want to get it close to 3.8. All right, so 3.7 volts is pretty close. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna turn this off. We're gonna see what it floats at. 3.64. And we wanna see if it augers into the ground. You can see it's going down. That's not necessarily a good sign. Now we were throwing higher current at it. It is slowing down, so it's probably just about equalizing. So it may not be bad yet, but we didn't really have any current, or I should say any hot spots. So I don't think... There we go. You're just seeing the reflection of the contacts up top there. Sometimes that looks warm. So I think we're okay. Let me get all this disconnected and let's see, get this one out of here. Let's see what our other cells are at. So we have this set. That's our 3.529 and there's our 3.8. 3.529. So that's a stable 3.529. I think I want to try the charger here. I know I said I was going to try and charge that 3.5 set. Let's just double check which one that is. That's that one. Let's throw a little current at that and see what it does. If I can get my clamp on there. We might just hold it on there, call it good enough. Alright, let's see here, let's turn this back on. We 
We've got our polarity correct. You always want to have your polarity correct when you attempt this. So there we go. It's taken the current. You can see I moved there. It obviously dropped off. Let's see here if we do this. Let's just see what we get. So I don't think those are necessarily going to be bad. Let's see what they're at now. Let's turn our power supply off. Let's see what they're at now. Yeah, I think we're okay. So let me get the charger in here. Okay, now ideally you wouldn't be doing this with a rapid charger, but you know the old uh, work with what you got routine. You got to get these just right. See, I didn't plug that in just right. There we go. You got to get them just right. And if all those contacts don't make at the right time, it will fault. So what I'm waiting for here is this battery would fault before in about a few seconds it does not appear to be doing that so I believe we got it so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it back in its case and we're gonna put it in the slower charger and we'll see how it reacts Okay, here we are, kind of out on location. So excuse the not super steady recording, but this is the battery on the charger. Now these multi-chargers are indeed slower, but I like that better. Let's take a look to see if anything is getting warm. I might have to back up a little bit. There we go. Now, you can see everything's looking pretty pretty cool yet. If you recall those were the cells close there. Everything looking nice and cool on the battery pack. So nothing to worry about here. And here we are fully charged. Let's check it out. So here we go a long-winded way of fixing a battery but it seems like it's working which is good it's a win sometimes these things take some time let's get it on our test tool that band file there we go four bars so now what we're gonna need to do is we're just gonna have to keep track of this battery and what what it does if it gets to a point where it doesn't want to take a charge again those two cells may have been damaged but in this instance we brought them back up sometimes with these if you bring a, a, a lagging cell back up they behave it's something with the balancing circuits and charging that they sometimes get out um, but we'll give it a go these aren't cheap batteries so it was worth trying to save it uh, we we got a cheap knockoff version of this. I didn't even buy the full case. I didn't buy the bottom part. I took a gamble on that. You can just buy the top. And this is that other part because this wasn't damaged. We reused the Milwaukee part. And this is just an aftermarket uh, red part. So um, there we have it. As of now, I'll call it a win. A little bit of a roller coaster, but we'll throw this thing into service and see how it does. So as always, thanks for watching, and have a great day.